Hey everybody, welcome to Crazy Tech Lab and I'll start off today by saying that if you're unlucky enough to have met me in person if, or if you've seen my ramblings over on BitTech or in Custom PC Magazine or over on Forbes, you'll know that I'm a huge small form factor fan and in fact you can see a whole bunch of crazy water-cooled mini ITX PCs that I've built here on my YouTube channel as well. And uh, today then, the product that I'm looking at is probably my most highly anticipated motherboard of 2019 for that reason, and it is, of course, the brand new ASUS Crosshair 8 Impact. So what we have here is basically the resurgence of the Impact range, and I'm hoping that ASUS will decide to uh, get it out on uh, Intel's latest socket as well, or maybe a future socket. But what, what basically happened is that the impact range died a death back on the Z170 chipset, which was a great shame because it was my favorite motherboard range. Um, absolutely you know, crazy motherboards with loads of features. And if you wanted to build an absolutely kick-ass mini ITX water cool PC or something like that, then it was your go-to motherboard. But times have changed. And uh, I have to admit that if you told me three years ago that uh, the impact would be returning, but on an AMD socket, I would have probably laughed in your face. But this time, it's things are different, competition's changed, and of course, Ryzen happened a couple of years ago, back in 2017. So ASUS has seen fit to resurrect the impact on socket AM4 and the X570 chipset. So what do we actually have here in terms of a motherboard? Well, as you can see, the two motherboards behind me, which I'll talk about in a minute, are Mini ITX. What we don't have here is a Mini ITX motherboard. This is a Mini DTX. And basically, the long and short of it is if I get the old impact there, you can see that there's about an inch uh, hanging off the bottom. So this is not the usual 170 millimeter by 170 millimeter Mini ITX form factor. It's the same width, as you can see. Hopefully I'll get that all in shot. It's the same width but you are dealing with uh, about an extra inch or sort of two and a half, three centimeters uh, down the bottom there. And that can potentially raise a few problems if you're building a mini ITX PC, because while, it's, while ASUS has said that the impact will fit in the majority of mini ITX cases, uh, the problem is that there are a few out there um, that will struggle to fit, or at the very least, it will hamper your ability to fit other hardware in there, specifically cooling hardware. So, for example, Raging Tech's Ophion Evo, you've got space at the top, um, but again, the stretching the PCIe riser cable round might be tricky. And of course, I think the, uh, the motherboard kind of sits like this in the Raging Tech Evo. And the problem is that you're basically losing an inch of clearance at the top, which is going to prevent you from using standard water cooling gear and uh, all-in-one liquid coolers in the roof, unless you opt for half-height fans such as those from Noctua or something like that. But, actually I say but, there is one other downside to this motherboard, which is the price. Um, we haven't actually seen confirmed prices in the UK or the US yet, I'm still waiting on those. but. We're, it, you, won't, you won't be leave, uh, leaving with much change from £400 or maybe even higher than that in dollars. I haven't actually seen the dollar price yet, but it has landed at some of the uh, sort of less savoury retailers here that seem to get list the products early um, and the prices do tend to change, but we are looking at a fairly hefty price. Um, quite possibly the most expensive Mini ITX motherboard or certainly mainstream Mini ITX motherboard that has ever existed. But Finally, there's that but. Everything else with this board, I absolutely love. It is everything impact about it in terms of craziness and everything else. And uh, what I'll start then, uh, start with then, is just a quick overview of what the impact range actually is for those of you that don't really know what it is or you just need a refresh. So let's bring in uh, my trusty uh, impact, uh, Maximus 7 impact. Actually, this was the, uh, the Z97 chipset model. And you'll have to ex um, uh, excuse all the, uh, the lack of heat sinks and uh, VRM, um, VRM thermal pads and that kind of stuff. I've actually had this board fully water-cooled with the Bits Power water block uh, for most of its life, and I just whipped that off just for this video. And um, as you can see, it's absolutely crammed with features. You've got power and reset buttons. You've got um, the daughter board here with the added power circuitry. You've got additional vertical fan headers. Um, and flipping it round, the, uh, the rear I.O. panel is equally crazy, so you've got a, uh, a CMOS clear button, you've got the LED postcode display, USB BIOS flashback, video outputs, and a whole bunch of USB, uh, USB ports as well. And uh, I believe these are power and 
uh, power and reset uh, switches there as well. I can't actually remember what they're for, but yeah, just absolutely teeming with features. So, and there was also a door, a audio daughter board that sat there, but that's in the box, which is in my attic at the moment. So I, uh, I didn't have time to get that down in time for this video. But basically what we're looking at here is just the epitome of Mini ITX, uh, certainly for the mainstream. And it's great to see ASUS bringing this back. I think ASUS should be bringing it back because in my mind, it is the motherboard manufacturer that we all see as the premium and coming out with the craziest motherboards. And ASUS should be uh, flying the flag with premium motherboards, even if things like the Impact don't actually sell that well. In my mind, that's beside the point. Anyway, so what other motherboards are, is the new Impact going up against? Well, in terms of mainstream, uh, Ryzen is kind of leaning into uh, the high end with, the, with its latest processors. Um, but uh, what we're looking at is something that is gonna be absolutely crazy if you fit it with something like a, a Ryzen 9 3950X. Can you imagine 16 cores in this thing? It'll be absolutely crazy, but that is what this board has been designed to do. Um, so flipping over, if you also want to consider, you know, crazy high-end mini ITXP uh, motherboards, then you've got some of ASRock's motherboards. Now this is the X uh, the X99 E ITX AC. The uh, the X299 version is actually in my PC upstairs uh, in the Fantex Shift build, which you can see in my other videos. And uh, this is obviously a, uh, a, a just an absolutely crazy motherboard. It's got um, obviously the uh, Intel. LGA 2011 socket on there, so I think I've got the 10 core in there, the 6950X, and um, it was an absolute beast of a motherboard. And the only reason I upgraded was because Intel added another eight cores with the uh, X29 with the um, X299 socket. So upstairs, I've got the uh, the 9980XE in that motherboard, which is yeah, just a crazy setup to have. So this is the kind of stuff that ASUS will be um, going up against, uh, because of course ASUS does not have any kind of mini ITX or even micro ATX presence on uh, Intel's high-end socket. So, and again, this is true mini ITX, whereas the new Impact is mini DTX, so that is potentially something that ASRock has an advantage with here. So, enough rambling about Impacts and other mini ITX motherboards. Let's actually look at the motherboard in question here. And uh, just a quick flick round the PCB, which is absolutely packed, as you'd expect. So the rear I.O. panel, you've got USB BIOS flashback, you've got CMOS, a CMOS clear switch, a reset button here as well, which is kind of handy to have on the uh, on the back of the motherboard, oh, sorry, the, on the I.O. panel. And uh, I kind of like this sort of embedded um, LED postcode display there. You've got the uh, the latest standard of Wi-Fi. Um, something I was maybe a tad disappointed with was the, uh, the only, you've only got three audio outputs there. So people with 7.1 or eight channel uh, speaker systems, we'll have to run another audio header off the um, audio, or audio port of the onboard audio header to get that extra channel. Um, so something I did like about the rear IO panel though is that you've got um, six or seven uh, type A USB ports. Um, a whole bunch of those are USB th uh, 3.1 Gen 2. You've also got a Gen 2 type C port there as well. And uh, of course, this whole unit here is what's been the subject of quite a lot of attention with the impact. So what we've got is basically two small fans. I think they're either 30 centimeter or 40 centimeter fans. Looking at them, I'm inclined to say 30. Uh, they are pretty quiet while it's running, uh, thankfully, and you can fine tune the speed of the fans in uh, the ASUS EFI or in the, in the AI suite. But overall, I mean, this is just an absolutely crazy setup here because what you've got is a large heatsink. This is all metal all, all around here, solid metal heatsink that sits on top of the chokes. Um, I think it actually calls the uh, the chipset as well. The X570 chipset is actually underneath the big chipset, uh, the, sorry, the big heatsink down there. And then these two fans actually sit on top of two um, uh, smaller metal finned heat sinks, which you might just be able to see in those two small holes down there and there. And they actually call the VRMs, but I'll be taking that off in a minute for a strip down so you can see what there is. And um, other things on the PC then, you've obviously got the standard USB 3.1 uh, header down here for type C uh, compatible cases. You've got um, the safe, uh, safe boot and retry button down here. And uh, start button up here, always very useful te for testing or if you're benchmarking. A whole bunch of stuff down here as well for water cooling and uh, additional fan headers and that kind of thing. Now down here, this probably looks like some sort of M.2 heatsink, but it's not. It's actually uh, a cover 
just a fascia for the onboard audio. So ASUS has kind of run the, uh, the circuitry round to the ports at the rear, but that is the, the latest um, Supreme FX. So, um, so that's basically where the, uh, where the audio sits. And uh, it's looking like it's going to be, you know, one of the best audio options out there because ASUS has obviously tweaked the Realtek 1220 audio codec and ASUS usually nails it in terms of audio as well, to be fair. So there's only one PCI Express uh, 16 times slot there. That's obviously uh, PCI Express 4.0. Um, as you'd expect on a mini ITX motherboard. And there was some discussion uh, when we saw the first images, uh, what the port above it is. And as you can see, it is essentially not a DIM.2, but a SoDIM.2 port. So this is where your M.2 ports will go. There are no M.2 ports on the rear of the PCB uh, for the simple reason that you can see that ASUS has actually laid on a backplate there, which is actually um, helping to cool the PCB as well. We'll talk more about that in a minute when I do the strip down. And as you can see, I will just pop this off here like that. And that basically comes off as your, uh, your M.2 module. So there is a, uh, an M.2 port on that side and again on the rear as well. So you've got two M.2 ports to play with. Both support PCI Express 4.0 SSDs or SATA SSDs. So if you want to have one cheaper SATA SSD for storage, and there are some really great deals around at the moment for one terabyte and two terabyte SATA M.2 uh, drives, uh, or M.2 SSD should I say, so you could have one big one for storage and maybe have another smaller 500 gig or one terabyte uh, PCI Express 4 SSD for uh, for your OS and programs and, that, and games and that kind of stuff. So this board also gives you another RGB header down here and you've also got two additional 4-pin fan headers and they are individually controllable in the EFI and the software as well. And uh, I think they're actually labelled as the radiator fans, so um, it's kind of nice for ASUS to label them. But you know, whether or not you want to use them for radiators is is another is another matter. Um, but I kind of like the uh, the Dim Dot Two. It's not the most elegant solution because it is kind of sticking up off the PCB there. But the great thing is this is the coolest M.2 SSD uh, heatsink that I've actually tested on any motherboard. So the fact that it sticks way up and uh, I, I test on a test bench, but I do have a, a mock case fan on the side. And the fact that it's sitting up there, it's able to make use of your case's airflow means that you get great cooling for your M.2 SSDs. So moving back to the PCB then, you can see where that, uh, that, dim, that SODIM.2 slot sits just down there. And uh, a pretty busy PCB, but they do manage to cram in four SATA ports as well. So that should be enough for most people. And uh, what I would do now then is actually uh, do like a, a quick flick through um, a time lapse of me dismantling the motherboard. And then we can start talking about the features underneath all the components there. Okay, so that's everything kind of uh, dismantled and um, what I'll do in a second is actually just remove this, uh, this heat sink here now that it's all detached. But I just thought I'd give you a, a view of those fans in there. So um, I'm guessing they are 30 millimeter fans. They certainly look, look like it from here. And uh, thankfully, as I said, they are quiet. And, um, but it's just kind of just a really cool design. And um, I really like it. Uh, the fact that you're cooling both the VRMs and the chipset in there. It's perfect for a, a mini ITX setup because I think the chipset, you know, there's obviously no room for a fan really on the PCB, um, seeing as they've already extended it down. So what they're doing is basically amalgamating all the cooling and uh, putting the two fans there to cool everything that needs to be cooled on the motherboard apart from the processor, of course. So let's see if I can do this on camera. Um, I managed to do it earlier, but uh, it's obviously a little bit tricky trying to get things get things out on camera. Um, I'm just going to double check that I did actually remove all the screws. Yes, I did. So I'm just hoping if I can just pop it out. Ah, there we go. Right. So what I won't do is detach all the uh, all the fan cables because uh, I think ASUS will probably kill me. <laughs> um, so I don't want to break any of them because I still need to do any still need to do some testing with this motherboard. But basically, what you've got here is a um, 
uh, 10 phase, uh, total, well, a total of 10 phases uh, power circuitry. You can see the, uh, the chipset down there as well. If I just bring that in, uh, that's down there. And as you can see, the, uh, the heat sinks are kind of embedded on top of the, um, uh, the actual fin heat sinks are actually embedded on top of the, uh, the plates that actually sit in this one piece aluminium heat sink around here. So the, uh, the heat pads, thermal pads uh, attached to the, um, the chokes and then you've got a separate thermal pad down there that sits on top of the VRMs and then you've got another pad here that sits on top of the chipset. So it's a pretty cool design. Um, I really, really like it. The fact that everything here is uh, basically all bolted onto one large heat sink. So it spreads the heat load. You've got two, fa two small fans working away and um, it's, uh, yeah, it's just, it's just a really, really neat little design really. And um, certainly from the VRM temperatures that I've seen, they're, they're doing a good job as well because I didn't see anything above 50, 55 degrees even after 10, minute, uh, 10 minutes of load with my uh, 12 core um, 3900, uh, sorry, uh, Ryzen 9 3900X, that's the one. So what I'll do now that you've seen the uh, the top of the motherboard is just talk about the uh, the backplate because as I said I think it's pretty much the only backplate on a Mini ITX motherboard that I've ever seen, and you know the the attention to detail doesn't stop here either. I mean just look at that an embedded heat pipe into the backplate, and this is why I think the motherboard runs so cool on the VRMs and. In terms of measuring the VRM temperatures, I use the, uh, the software as well as an IR probe um, to check out the rear and the top side of the, uh, the, the VRMs as best I could. And um, they, seem, they seem to be pretty, uh, pretty cool all around. As I said, I didn't, I didn't measure temperatures above 50 to 55 degrees, excuse me, uh, 50 to 55 degrees across the entire motherboard. So, um, and that's the rear top and the software. So it's clearly doing something. You can see from the indentation marks there that they are actually making contact with the, uh, the components on the rear side of the PCB. And if we just have a look at the rear side of the PCB, you can see all the, uh, the power circuitry components down there. So ASUS has done a really good job here of dealing with this. And uh, there's also a small thermal pad up there for um, having the uh, additional um, power circuitry at the top of the board, which is encased for by cooling on, on the top, but it is cooled underneath using the back plate. So that's the teardown of the, uh, the Maximus Impact. And uh, basically it's, it's a real triumph here from ASUS. I know, it, I know it's gonna be an expensive motherboard. Um, I know that Mini ITX would have been a favorable form factor, but Mini DTX, it, yeah, you're sacrificing an inch of space there and that is gonna hinder it in some instances with some of the smaller Mini ITX cases out there. But overall, I absolutely love this board. It's exactly what ASUS should be doing. It's done something similar with the new, uh, the new uh, Maximus Gene in terms of going back to its roots with a ROG, an, an ROG motherboard that is kind of, you know, it's not going for sales, it's just going to, you know, improve the brand and improve its image. And that is exactly what ASUS hasn't been doing for quite a long time, especially with sub ATX form factors. So I'm absolutely thrilled that ASUS has brought the impact back and um, the price is gonna certainly gonna be an issue for some, but if you're just after the craziest mini ITX PC out there, of course, the motherboard isn't, uh, isn't mini ITX, I know that, but, it will fit in the vast majority of Mini ITX cases, but it's just a case of saving up for it and uh, finding a case that does fit for your particular requirements. So I'm off now to try and see if this, if this can fit in my next uh, Mini ITX mod. So stay tuned and uh, speaking about my channel, it's uh, obviously not got that many videos at the moment. I am looking to expand massively in the future because I've got a, a whole new office space planned with uh, dedicated video suites. So uh, I'll hopefully be bringing lots more videos to you in the near future. And uh, so stay tuned and thanks for watching.